Okay, uh, welcome to photo vlog number four, I think. Um, what I'm doing is uh, video film studies of uh, Muay Thai, trying to um, see what I can uncover by shooting in really high frame rates with the Fuji uh, Film X4. Um, and I'm experimenting with editing and color grading. Mostly, uh, these are just me stretching my limits, seeing what the outcome is, but also sharing with everybody because when you slow Muay Thai down, you get really uh, interesting textures, facial expressions, emotions. You experience the uh, give and take of what is otherwise a really like explosive art. Um, and you start to like strip away the like gloss of, oh, that was a really cool moment. And start seeing all the connective tissue of what makes um, high level fighting what it is. Um, right now, what you just saw was uh, Sylvie uh, doing uh, pressure spar fighting with Yo Kun Pan. Yo Kun Pan is the elbow hunter of 100 stitches. He's probably the greatest elbow fighter in Thai history. No fighter uh, that I know of relied so much on elbow attack, um, wove so much of his overall fighting um, style on a single weapon. Um, for those that don't know, elbows, especially in the golden age, were kind of um, a low weapon, like it does, didn't give you a lot of credit or social esteem. Um, and so he basically picked a, a low scoring, low, um, socially low weapon, it was seen as kind of brute, brute, unartistic, and he built an entire pressure style around it. Yokumpan lives next to the gym. Um, so Sylvie has started just a deep dive of doing these um, pressure spar fighting. It's 30 minutes every morning with him. And what he does, he just straps on the belly pad and they just pressure fight. Um, so it's pretty much sparring. Although he's also, you know, like dancing with Barishnikov. Uh, Barishnikov would be like leading you through subtly leading you through uh, openings and closures, exerting his own rhythms on you. Uh, so it's up to you as a fighter to absorb them, like uh, Rogue of um, the X-Men, take those powers for yourself. And a lot of what's happening with Sylvie and what I'm trying to capture in these film studies is that process. And I'm really excited about this particular um, study that you just watched. Um, it's kind of a leap from what my other ones were. The other ones were more like, let's let the camera just grab what it can grab. Um, so to talk a little bit about the details, this time I shot at 240 frames per second. Previously, I shot at um, 200. Um, if you're not technically minded, when you shoot at really high frame rates, uh, um, frames per second is like the number of pictures kind of grabs that are being taken every second. When you shoot at something like 200 frames per second or 240 frames per second, then you can slow the film way down, the video way down, and still get um, a natural clear view um, uh, film generally is played back at 24 frames, frames per second, so the camera is capturing at roughly 10 times the rate of film. Um, so it allows you to create these kind of like um, really pulled apart moments, which I think come forward in this, uh, in the film study you just watched. So f some things that um, I was working on this time there's a film director that just fucking influenced me so hardcore, not influenced me like in an art student way, but rather just like viscerally influenced me is Tarkovsky, a Russian film director who fought, shot really slow moving montages, just 
to me, the most beautiful filmmaker ever. Um, there's some good ones out there, but he just r rings my emotional bell. And so he takes very long pans, slow moving pans through nature, um, over characters. And I, and he had this theory, he, he described in some, in one book that, um, editing for him was like uh, water pressure that as as you have a take of a, of the camera movement it's like um that take has a is a certain diameter of uh a pipe and so if you have a wide uh diameter of a pipe a lot of water can move through it but it's not under high pressure when you constrict the pipe the water pressure builds so I don't know if actually he meant this in his description, but for me, there is this thing when you have a, a take and you have a close up frame, you're having a narrower diameter pipe and the pressure is building um, a wider frame and you have like volume of water moving, but it's not high pressure and high pressure, I think is an analogical to emotional buildup. So this is the first time I started playing with the water pressure, I think. Um, I started cropping in. You'll see uh, me cropping in at times on the full frame um, to create what I'm feeling is like this constriction of pressure. And then you go to a wider pipe on the next cut to relieve that pressure. And so you're creating like rhythms of compression and release, compression and release. And it's my first time doing it, so I'm just feeling my way through it. I'm sharing it with you guys, but it's kind of cool. Um, in that compression, in that release, I'm mimicking or following the kinds of pressure and release that are occurring in the sparring. Like, Yotkumpan is this really interesting, as I call it, a pressure fighter who is always advancing on his opponent and compresses them with uh, proximity and then has these like super glued lock-ons for the clinch and is always ripping elbows uh, from the outside over guard. Um, you can see Sylvie doing the Yokumpon kind of like compressed elbow over over the uh, from the outside position in the clinch um, and so what I'm kind of trying to capture there I'm feeling is the same way that Yokum Pan is like doing this accordion of space everything is close and then there's closer and then not as close closer and not as close and what he's trying to teach Sylvie is to feel just like I'm trying to feel in my edits my compression and my release is to feel the subtle grades of controlling space of compressing the space and then letting it relax and you and you'll see in the video that you can see that there are times that sylvie lets the space relax too much um that she pulls she falls out of the fight zone and right when those times are uh, yokum pan will punish her with a kick or something like that and then she dives back in it's like diving back into surf or a wave <clears throat> And ideally you want to live in that fight space and you use the compression and release compression and release to control your opponent's emotions and ability to respond you set the tempo um, and it's very much what like female fighters are doing from four feet away you're doing it within two feet and so I, w I feel like in this film study captured some of those compre the, the breathing of very close uh, infighting. Um, a lot of clinch and Muay Thai fighting in Thailand is seen as unartful, uh, not as beautiful as the femur, like dance away fighting of let's say some art. But when you really study Yokum Pan, you, you and other super pressure fighters like uh, Long Swan, Chum Pet at times, Diesel Noy, 
is that there the same kinds of breathings of compression and release that are occurring on the femur at four feet away with a femur fighter that's visible from everywhere, these compressions are happening in two feet and they can't be seen from the back row until a knee lands or something. So a back row uh, audience member is just seeing a knee or a turn or some moment. They cannot see the like compression and release that's happening within two feet. Cool thing about having this camera rolling at really high frame rates and with some editing and I'm using jump uh, I'm using cuts instead of fades uh, between pieces to create that little bit of that jump in um, transition is that you can like expose and illustrate and illuminate these contractions and release I think and I think there's some, I can see in this film study that that's definitely uh, what has happened. Um, I'm really excited about it because it shows you that photography has a place in Muay Thai to reveal and symbolize aspects of the art. And f photographers, I'm a still photographer mostly. Um, I like to shoot in wider angle, uh, although this one was shot at 23 millimeter um, on the Fujifilm format, um, which I think is 35 millimeter on full frame. Uh, generally, I like to shoot in 16 millimeter because I want to create a wider sense of space, of context. But even at 23, you still get that kind of contraction. It invites closer close-ups, but also I was going to say, photography has this role in representing the art and the sport. What photographs do is they cut out a piece of something. Um, and when it's cut out, it then stands in, in metonymy for all the rest of the sport. Uh, if you shoot a fight and you capture five slices, five still photography moments, like when the glove is punching, hitting the jaw and the sweat is spraying off. If you have four shots like that and you're representing a fight, what you're really saying is this is the essence of the fight. If you strip away everything else and boil it all down, these five slices, four slices, are the core of the fight. So photography in Muay Thai and in fight photography is always making these kinds of incisions these symbolized summations of action. And as a still photographer, I'm generally trying to create a wider concept of what could be captured and represented. I'm interested in the influences that are outside of a single striking moment or something like that. With videography, because you have slow motion to reveal like, shades of emotion in the face and Yokum Pond's very good to work with in sparring because as you can see and it, he invests his motions with emotion uh, when he throws an elbow his face screws up as if he's gonna fucking like blast you off the planet like he is honestly reliving the emotional arcs the drama of what he would be doing in a fight he's not just technically doing something in that way, he's kind of like guiding Sylvie through an, an emotional landscape and inviting her to feel similar things, to respond when you feel that. It's also a very interesting thing about this kind of sparring is that, um, again, like dancing with Barishnikov, you are <clears throat> being escorted through an emotional landscape that is one you might visit in a fight for like three seconds or ten seconds. But he's like, let's do this for 30 minutes. Um, and I think slowing down the camera, creating these jump cuts to close-ups, um, start to reveal these patterns of fighting, and in particular, Yokum Pond's style, which is not the um, not a usual style uh, of Muay Thai, Muay Thai or even Muay Cao. He has his own individual style. I think we're starting to capture that. I did some more color grading, for those that don't follow, color grading is where you create um, gradations of hue differences 
in the film, it would be like an Instagram filter, and Instagram filters are like a pre-made um, stock, often like clunky, extreme version of uh, what color grading is in video. There are pre-made um, video filters, which are called LUTs, the, that, uh, and I'm, I generally use a couple of LUTs that I've downloaded, I've paid for, but, um, and then I tweak them, I pull up some yellows or blues. Um, so I've color graded the different jumps to create different emotional uh, textures um, for the overall narrative. And then the whole thing is shot in Eterna. Eterna is a kind of like, uh, is an old Fujifilm um, film, um, film that had a certain characteristic. So the Fujifilm camera, um, is able to shoot in an imitation of its old film. And Eterna is a kind of like cinematic um, base that I like to shoot out of and a lot of people like to shoot out of. People buy the Fujifilm camera because uh, they like Eterna. Um, so there is a, it's shot in Eterna, then it's pushed through a couple of different LUTs that I've uh, purchased. And then um, those two are kind of like color graded out um, sometimes I, in the beginning, I tried to move towards blues, um, create the like somberness of the slowness of the action. And then I moved towards yellows towards the end and some neutral, um, cuts. Um, I'm not sure how it all came together, but this is just me experimenting. It's kind of cool. Um, for those that are interested in the technical side of things, I then, uh, bring everything into my movie editing software is Vegas Movie Studio 17 Pro 17. Um, it's a pretty, I'm very comfortable with it. I've been editing in it for a couple of years now. Um, one thing that's nice in the Pro version of 17 is they allow velocity envelopes, what they're called. So you open up a particular clip and you set a velocity envelope and it allows you to like slow down the action by degrees to create slopes of speed um, within a single uh, clip. And I'm kind of like, you, I'm definitely working with this. There are times that I really want to slow something down and it is almost to the moment of stopping um, because I think emotionally there's that kind of thing uh, happening. Um, like if something is slowing down the action, I almost want to slow it down more um, so I'm working in that software. Um, if anybody's interested in doing that stuff themselves, but largely what I'm really excited about is this is probably my best, uh, fo film study so far in fo as far as capturing what's actually out there, what's happening, uh, in this stretch of time. I think this was a single round of their sparring. Uh, they do six rounds, I believe, uh, every day. Um, if you're interested in Yokum Pon's style, we've actually documented a ton of it. Um, in the Muay Thai library, I think there's like three or four, um, <laughs> there's some guy who lives in the building who's like, um, got a motorcycle. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, that he's constantly like, um, working on it, revving it, um, downstairs in the parking lot drives me crazy. The um, Yokum Pon, we've got seven days in the Sylvie Study um, on demand um, video series. That's just Sylvie doing commentary of seven days of working, uh, seven hours of working with Yokum Pon. Um, that's a really cool chunk because you get to see Yokum Pon teaching his style um, progressively day after day after day. Um, and uh, that in that study is also 30 hours with Karahat. These are in-depth studies if you really want to dive into some really sublime uh, Muay Thai fighters and they get um, the proceeds of those on demand sales. And then in as a patron on in the Muay Thai library, we've got uh, several hours of Yokun Pon teaching his style from a couple years ago, uh, most of it um, when Sylvie was first getting familiar with what he was doing. So. 
hey, I'm inviting you guys to look closely through the, the lens of the film study and start to feel some of those like relaxations and pressures that I'm trying to illustrate with cuts and close-ups um, and film grades. And ho hopefully I can just become more and more sensitive to how to use these technical choices, these artistic choices um, to further express what's happening. I think in this film study, I got kind of, I got in the ballpark of what was happening, but I don't have command over the um, skills yet where I can like start to like open them up and make them kind of like aesthetically expanded. Like what you really w would love to do is like create these stillnesses and motion shifts so that even an uneducated eye, somebody who just watches video in their life or film in their life, um, can just feel how different Muay Thai is from any other uh, fighting art. So thanks for watching um, this vlog and thank you everyone who supports us, uh, Sylvia and I through Patreon. Part of what you're doing is supporting my journey as a photographer and now a videographer. Um, and if you like to see what I do, I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram. You'll see my uh, still photography there. And you can even get prints of, of what I think are my favorites of shots that I've already had on moynar.com. So um, until next time, thank you.